Hallelujah. Let's get the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo Hallelujah. Amen. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. We do give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To every one of you in your respective places, to our guests and visitors and those who are watching on the media platform, our e-members and, and, uh, and guests and friends, we thank God for you. Um, wasn't praise and worship off the chain this morning? <laughs> and um, I thank God for it because uh, praise, is, praise is a type of warfare uh, just as well as thanksgiving. Amen. And uh, the enemy cannot stand when we praise the Lord, and particularly when you're going through. Because when he think that he has paralyzed you in one thing to the other and yada, 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 and, but you yet find a place in there to, to praise the Lord. Isn't that powerful? And uh, Hannah, and out of all that she was experiencing, she wanted to have a baby, isn't that right? But man, she postured herself before she... Uh, became pregnant in her difficult situation, man, and she began to praise the Lord and began to let him know, look, I'll give him back to you. I'll give him to you as, a, as an offering in one sense of speaking. And I'm excited about that. That, that, that tells me something. Yeah, the, the Old Testament people, uh, they didn't have uh, the, the New Testament because of the mere fact the Old Testament was was, uh, was, was being produced, and it was giving us a lot of history in terms of how God moved with people. Isn't that right? And so, but, um, but uh, they was governed up under the law and so forth and so on, but when you find people, when their back is against the wall, but they yet praise the Lord, they yet acknowledge him, even when it doesn't, uh, how that song goes to say, when it, even when it seemed like he's working, <laughs> praise God, because our God is an awesome God, and uh, in his awesomeness, he has, he has a reserve for his people, and uh, we're going to uh, get into the message here in just a little bit, but I just want to say this, is that you have something to praise God about. Uh, we're going to continue to talk about uh, grace, the unmerited favor of God. When we don't yet deserve it, God yet give it to us. And there's scriptures that point uh, to grace and say that grace is a gift. Somebody say grace is a gift. Grace is a gift. And have you ever just given someone a gift? You freely give it to them. So once you give it to them, now they take ownership of that gift. Amen. And as I was thinking about this thing, that when God had given us grace through Christ Jesus, he, that, that grace is now in our possession, and it's up to us how we take care of it. Have you ever, you know, I, I raise kids, you, you can give them something, man, and one thing to the other, and, and then, man, you give them that gift, and then maybe a week, a month later, man, you can't hardly, you can't hardly tell what it is. Because, because they wasn't able or, or, or they didn't have within them to take care of that gift. So what are you saying, Pastor? Y'all know where I'm going. When God gives you his grace as a gift, we have the responsibility to take care of it. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So if you don't take care of the gift and, 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 uh, and it begin to uh, not look so good on you, Praise the Lord. It, the obvious is, is that we have not come to a full place of appreciation. Amen. This gift was paid for by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It was given and it was paid for by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So therefore, when we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. And when we have accepted him as Savior and Lord, he had factored in the package or the plan of salvation grace because he know that we need grace in this earth realm. It's not by my merits. Glory be to God. It's not by my, my deeds. It's not by the finances of one thing to the other, but it's by God's grace that we have legal access to his throne. Amen. Amen. Grace is there 
and it has bridged the gap between man and God. I'm going to say this part, and then we get into the message. When, when, when Jesus was hanging on that cross, glory be to God, and when the veil split from the, from the top down to the bottom, man, it released grace for humanity. And as many that will call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Now, he didn't, he didn't tell us uh, that you won't have issues anymore. No, 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 no. You're going to continue to have issues. But in the midst of it now, you have help. You have grace, uh, that gift that was given to you. And, and how many of us, how many of us, and I'll raise my hand first, how many of us have gotten into a place we did everything we know to do, but glory be to God, out of all of our strength, out of all of our influences, out of all of everything that we have, it couldn't move nothing. But when grace stepped in, grace supersedes all of our abilities. It supersedes all of our relationship. It supersedes all of our goodness because there's nothing good in us. Glory be to God, except for the spirit of God that dwell within us. Hallelujah. The word of God said that God does not treat us as our sins deserve, but grace stepped in. See, I should have been dead sleeping in my grave a long time ago, but grace stepped in and said, behave. May we lift our hands in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's something about that unmerited favor. And when I, and let me testify. When I know that I did not deserve the grace of God, God had pity. God had mercy on me. Say, I'm going to help that young fool. I'm calling myself a fool. I'm going to help that young fool so he can see that my grace is sufficient for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And have you ever had that moment when you did everything you know to do and you couldn't make anything move, but here come grace? Grace come running, hallelujah, and grace have, have, have taken chaos and used chaos as a luncheon board so that grace can cause you to go forth. See, see, when you have grace in your life, or, or let, me say, let, let me say this, God had given us grace, grace calls movement in our life. Some of us, amen, we have dealt with generational things. Come on now. And the enemy had planted a curse within, within the bloodline. So now here come you, a generation. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You don't quite know what to do, but you have made an inner vow saying that I'm not going to let that happen to me. Guess who heard it? The enemy heard it. And he's going to do his ever living best or his ever devilish best to try to make us out of a lie. That's all right. But watch this. Even when it seemed like that we have been beat down or the enemy trying to hold our shoulders to the canvas on the 10th count, glory be to God, at the fifth and ninth second when the hand getting ready to go down and say 10, grace steps in. And what I learned about grace, you know, and this is just me speaking, you have to, you have, to have a part. It go back to the gift again. If you never use the gift, you never, you, you never know or you can never appreciate it. So when, when, gift, I mean, when, that, when that gift of grace is there and when we begin to move in this earth realm, praise God, to break barriers, come on now, to climb mountains, come on now, uh, to be able to go further than the generations that is behind us, it takes grace. Grace is sufficient. And what I love about this grace, once again, is factored into salvation. But man, I tell you what, grace is able to step in into everything that you have in terms of what the Lord say that you can do. Rather, it's spiritually, physically, financially, socially, you name it, grace can give you favor among your peers. Amen. 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 So we seek for the provision of God through by the will of grace because sometimes when grace step in, it seems like it's not fair for those who are gazing, gazing on. Well, how did they do that? Well, how was I overlooking? Because of grace. 
Amen. Uh, Acts, the 20th chapter, this is our supported scripture. We have so many scriptures, but we're going to stick with this one particular one. Acts, the 20th chapter, and verse 32. This is the New King James Version. And notice what it says once again. It says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his what? The word of his grace. So God's word is active. Isn't that right? God's word calls action. Isn't that right? So he said, God and to the word of his grace. Grace is a vehicle now. Praise God, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. How many can stand to receive an inheritance? And sometimes situations may arrive and we don't even realize that we have an inheritance in it. The enemy will try to paint the canvas with, with chaos. He will try to paint the canvas with doubt, with fear, with unbelief. But even in the midst of the chaos, we should ask our question, uh, we should ask ourselves this question, what is it that the enemy don't want me to see? What is it that the enemy trying to keep me from? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at that point, at that point, this is where we invite the presence of the Lord in the situation. Amen. So let me read it again which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all. Somebody say all. All, all those who are what? Sanctified. Sanctified. We're talking about the unmerited grace of God. Now, so uh, we have talked, uh, Dr. Sandra and Pastor Neil had did a wonderful job regarding uh, this new Hebraic year, uh, 5785 uh, is pay hey, right? Praise God. And they broke it down. And I tell you, uh, nuggets, I was able to receive nuggets. So we're going to see how grace is factored in 5785. And so uh, when we look at five, everybody basically know that five represent what? Grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Amen. 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 Somebody, I'm prophesying by the spirit of the Lord. You have started a journey. You started at ground zero, which is one. You start making movement, which is two. And now you're trying to figure your way, which is three. You come to a crossroad, which is four. But you in, you're in the fifth day of your travel. When I say day, I'm not talking literally uh, like one, two, three, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But in this journey, uh, glory be to God, you are in the fifth day because you're in the valley of decision, and this fifth, number five, stands for grace. So all you need to do now is just put it on pause and allow the grace of God to come in, amen, to take the weather beat off of you, amen, to take the misery off of you, amen, to resuscitate and restore you and to cause the vision to come alive so that you can go to day six. See, there are different phases of our life that the Lord would allow us to travel. Amen. A lot of us would love to start from the top, but it don't work like that. Only a well digger and a grave digger, praise God, start from the top. Everything else has to start what? From the bottom. Amen. So some of us are at day five, amen, regarding our travel in this earth realm. And the Lord is getting ready to download Grace. Somebody say, I need, grace. I need grace. It may be a career. It may be a, a, a job. It may be a business. It may be, uh, glory be to God, that you're looking for your family uh, to start jailing and coming back together again. You, maybe you feel as though that your back is against the wall and say, what's the use? Here come grace. Grace will move upon us and cause us to do things out of the box. Grace will cause us to do things out of the restrictions of our emotions and say, you know what? I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to press in because I recognize grace there. Grace is going to do something. So that was for somebody. So grace. So yeah, yeah. Number five is grace. So we, and then we look at seven. And you know what? And when I looked at grace, man, 
especially the number five, is from the Old Testament to the New Testament. I think I got up to like 340 or either 350 talking about that number five and how God used five. Five is one of God's numbers, so you might want to put a little sticky pen in that. Glory be to God. Five is all over the Bible. And I can just start from Genesis and go all the way to Revelation. And so uh, now we look at seven, 57. We look at seven. Seven basically uh, means uh, the end of a cycle are complete and mature. Yeah, watch this, watch this, watch this. I really believe that the Spirit of the Lord is going to usher in grace. I can't speak for you, but I know what it is that if I have gotten out of a seven-year cycle, I repeat that same seven years again of the same cycles. We call it cycles, patterns, and behaviors. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. So, so, so watch this, watch this, watch this. Grace will step in when we come to the end of ourselves. And grace will put a period at the end of that seven-year cycle. Come on now. So that we can come to a real place on the Holy Ghost, say, all right, the seven-year cycle is over. It's complete. You have graduated, and now you come to a place of maturedness. Here come eight. You can't have an eight unless you have a seven. Seven will introduce eight when, when we allow Holy Ghost to prioritize us, especially when there is advancement, when there's movement. So here come eight, and eight basically means what? New beginning. How many can stand a new beginning? Oh, Pastor Sandra and I, we talk about it all the time in so many different ways. And we come to a real place that the seven-year cycle and everybody's seven-year cycle is different. Look at your neighbor and say, don't, me don't measure your seven years to mine. Stay in your lane. You do you, and I do me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory be to God. So a new beginning. And I can tell you of a surety that Dr. Sandra and I, we are we're on the path of a new beginning. Every time we come out here and work, glory be to God, and uh, they don't like the recognition, but the people is the black ones. I be singing in here, I'm living in the overflow. Because it's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing has come our way. Why? Because grace. Man, grace can call hills to melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Your situation in terms of what you're dealing with is very precious to God. The enemy is gambling that you won't allow grace to come in. But the Lord is right there on your side and say, I have grace knocking at your door. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Isn't that something God had to knock at his own church so he can come in? Look at your neighbor and say, answer the door. It's nobody but grace. God's grace, that unmerited favor. You know how you beat yourself up and you feel there's no what's the use? Glory be to God, and especially in the holiday season, as I shared last Sunday, the enemy will try to abuse these holiday seasons to try to make people feel like they have the mullet grubs. That's old school saying. <laughs> Praise God, or feel sad or feel lonely, uh, don't want to go forth, they, they feel miserable, uh, they feel lifeless, they allow the spirit of Bala to come in and make them feel old and drained. But man, here come Grace. Grace will peel, literally peel the lie off the fruit that God has given you, which is called life. 
Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands in his presence. We're going to tie it, all here, uh, tie, it all, tie it all in here just a little bit. So, and so, so we say five, seven, eight. Five grace, seven end of a cycle, complete, mature, eight new beginning, and here come five again. Somebody say sandwich. sandwich. Grace is at the head and grace is at the end. Amen. Isn't that something? God factored this thing in. So we're looking at grace, and I want to say favor. I want to say favor. Now, that bring me to this. Man, I have so much to share, but we want to get you out here in a real good time. So I want to impose upon the storyline of Joseph. Joseph had the favor of his father when he was a boy. Am I right? For those of us that read the Bible, the rest of you, you may have to catch the movie. <laughs> So he had the grace of his father at the beginning of his life. Watch this now. So we knew that his father favored him. He was a dreamer. He had a charisma about him uh, that stirred up mischief. It stirred up jealousy among his other brothers. Am I right about it? And so... That alone caused his brothers uh, to do something one day, and uh, he journeyed where his brothers was, and the brothers, they didn't like him. They wanted to kill him, but thank God for the elderly brother, he, he began to negotiate, said, no, let's don't do that. So they found a hole in the ground, which they call a whale, and they put him in there, and then they sold him to this merchant. Am I right? So now he's going through what we call a period of judgment. Oh, did I say that where there's, before there's grace, there is a judgment? Amen. Grace is the lawyer in the courtroom. <laughs> I felt that Baptist spirit getting ready to come on me. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to hoop today, praise the Lord. So, so, so therefore, now he's in a type of judgment by his what? Brothers. His brothers have judged him out of the bitterness of their heart. And now he's going through a season of judgment. Come on now. So watch this. So now the merchant takes Joseph and he sells Joseph to Potiphar's. Am I right? And so now, even though he's a slave to Potiphar, we see how grace began to introduce itself. Right. Joseph was in his house, and the word of the Lord says, and God was with him. Somebody say grace. And if you haven't read the end of the story, it'll make you think, well, maybe that's where his life is going to end up at. Oh, I just said something. Whatever season you're in, know of a surety, your life is not going to stop there. You don't understand, Pastor Gay. Don't look too good. That's okay. It's the perfect storm for grace to come in so that God can give you favor in your situation. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, oh, watch this, watch this. So now, he calls part of his house to prosper because he had favor. Did I say that grace give you favor? Yes. Grace stepped in and begin to download some things to him. So I'm going to give you favor with Potiphar. And Potiphar is going to entrust you with all of his affairs. Because now I give you favor with the abilities and the talents that wasn't developed among your father and your brothers because you didn't have no room to grow. But I'm going to put you in a place now. Yeah, you're going to become a slave. But I don't want you to look at the word or get caught up in the definition of slave. That's just a place and it's just a season of your life where I'm going to factor in something. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so now, so now, y'all know the story. His wife got a little spotty, lied on him, and told Potiphar's the lie, and Potiphar's got rid of him. Yeah, yeah. I believe Polyphus knew what he married. <laughs> yeah. But, but because of, for the sake of argument. <laughs> Boy, I'm talking real good. I'm talking better than what you guys are giving credit to right now. And so he got rid of him and Joseph went what? He went to prison. Somebody say second phase of his life. Well, actually, the third phase of his life, come on now, third phase of his life. Now he's in a whole different environment. But watch this. When he was in Potiphar's camp, Potiphar's house, some things was being developed. <laughs> he was able to experience the favor of God because grace gave him some tools that he needed in Potiphar's house because of the mere fact God knew God had to set up something so that Joseph wouldn't stay at level three or phase three. And some of us have built homes or you built businesses. And, but if, if you have five phases, you know that you cannot function properly and efficiently on level three or the third phase because it's not fully uh, developed. It has not been inspected uh, by the county, it has not been inspected by the state, it has not been inspected by the city. So now the Lord had developed something within him. And so even though he left out a part of his house and was cast into prison, his gift went with him. His talents went with him. Come on now, favor went with him. Even though now they have pinned a name on him, but that did not stop the favor and the grace of God. I hope you're getting this this morning. I don't care how ugly it is. I don't care what has been broadcast. God has developed you here. He put movement to it when it seemed like it was working against you because he had to get you out of here to put you here. And now you at phase three. Now he's in prison. Phase four. Man. Man. Grace and favor went to work, and so much the jailer made him the chief trustee. Can I say that? In the prison system. And God began to move upon two of the guys, the baker and the cupbearer, who was cast into prison. Joseph gave the interpretation. He didn't know what it was leading him. Here it is, the man was in a difficult situation. He bound, probably think, where well, this is where I'm going to spend my life. I'm not going to get any better, so let me just make the best out of it. Ooh, did I say something? Well, in this fourth phase of your life, make the best out of it. It's always easy to see the cup half empty, but I want to encourage you by the Holy Spirit to see the cup half filled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's someone in here, something has been sitting on the tables of your heart, and there's time to see when, 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 when you lend your mind to it or something, there's a trigger, you find, you find yourself, <gasps> I don't know who you are, but I'm telling you, grace is coming, and it's going to cause you to get out of that situation that you, will, that you won't see it the way that you've been seeing it before. Grace will give you a new lens to look through. Right. Amen. How many can stand some eyeglasses of grace by the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Yeah. 
So make the best. This is not even in my notes. You see that. Make the best out of level three or out of phase four. I mean, uh, 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 make the best out of level four or the phase four of your life on this journey that you're in as for us this season. Make the best out of it. Make the best out. Don't let it stop you from worshiping, praising God. Don't let it stop you uh, for uh, 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 giving. Don't let it stop you from saying Good morning. How you doing? Don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop what God has developed within you. Pour it out on phase four because it's doing more for you than what you realize. Because phase four is not the end. Phase four is not where you're going to spend eternity. It's just another phase of your life that God is factoring in something. Watch this. So now. Y'all know the story. He give forth the interpretation. Grace is on him. Grace calls favor. And if you look in the scripture and it say, and the Lord was with him and he prospered. Opportunity come by one of his fellow inmates. situation with the king see everybody want to come in the face of people who are important but sometimes we don't know how to get there we may have an idea of what we would do but when God is want to affect not only your life but your family your community come on now your marriage whatever it is God wants to do it his way because this next phase, level five, is going to open up things totally different. And this is where I call this last five favor and movement. Movement already been there, but we need movement. We need movement. We need movement to go beyond what we have heard about our family. We need movement to go beyond what we've been thinking about ourselves. We need grace. We need favor. We need movement to cause action to bring something new. And it takes discipline. What is the discipline? Trusting and believing in God. Faith come by what? And hearing is by the word of God. This is why at phase five of our life, which is grace, we should be in a place now that we are not stuck in two, three, four. We're in a place now that we have learned how to trust God in all of those le uh, levels behind us. That was part of your development and growth. I didn't get where I'm at, man, because I take a shower every day. Or as my brother said, the first, uh, the last, last Saturday of, of, of every, uh, every month. And if it's a, <laughs> and if it's a fifth uh, Saturday, that's a plus. No, 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 no. You didn't get where you are today. You had to learn how to trust God on every or in every level that he have allowed you to go through. You had to find God. You had to see God. You have to recognize God. Did I say this? When, you, when, you, when you're in phase three and four, your ears are being more fine-tuned to hear what the Lord is saying. It's easy to hear what the enemy is saying about you. It's easy to hear what the naysayers about you. But the Lord now at this point is training you to hear him. It's training you to recognize his impressions, his initial thoughts. To trust the dream that you had maybe three years ago and now here come the interpretation. That's right. May we lift our hands one more time in this house. I'm looking at us. Some of us may have experienced being stuck, but I'm telling you in Jesus name, the stuck is going to be a thing of the past. Because every action of your life 
hasn't been in vain. Look at somebody say, it hasn't been in vain. I don't care what happened. It hasn't been in vain. The enemy had the audacity to pick up a paintbrush on the precious canvas of your life. God have already laid it out, but he tried to rewrite things. He tried to repaint things. You know, and, and hear my heart, hear my heart. You know, I had co-workers that had tattoos, and so certain tattoos they didn't like, so they went back to the tattoo person, and they began to do something different, and it made it look different. In other words, when you look at the finished work, you couldn't see where it was before because it painted something different. I'm telling you, in Jesus' name, every place that the enemy have taken that brush and made strokes to try to bring a different... What the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn it for your good. Somebody shout, it's a, it's a new season. Declare over yourself, it's a new day. It's a new day. This is what I need you to do as I get ready to bring it in. I need you to prophesy in the life of two or three people. Just go to them and say, it's, I declare in Jesus' name, it's a new season and it's a new day of your life. Yes, declare that. Declare that. Do it. Yes. Declare it and mean it. Say it to them like you're speaking to yourself. It's a new season, sir. It's a new day in your life, in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May we give the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the Lamb of God. So now he's brought before the king. Get ready. Some of you are getting ready to be brought before the king. Whatever the symbolic of the king is, you're getting ready to be brought before the king. You're ready now. You're not going before the king all ghetto. Say, what's up, dog? Yeah, throw you out of there. But now you're ready to conquer the thing that is before you. To conquer the thing that mama couldn't conquer, daddy couldn't conquer, grandparents couldn't conquer, brothers couldn't conquer, siblings couldn't conquer. Now you're ready to conquer it. Not by your power, not by your might, but by the spirit of God. Why? Because now grace has, has outfitted you. Hallelujah. Grace. Grace. As I prepare to close, when I think about this grace that God has given to us as a gift through by a permanent sacrifice that was made, that we no longer have to make a sacrifice because Christ became that sacrifice for us. When he was obedient unto death, he could have called down a legion of angels if he wanted to and just wipe out the whole mask, but he didn't. He gave up his life for humanity. And there they, they put him on the cross. And while he was on that cross, he took on your sins and my sins. Because we wasn't worthy to die and we wasn't worthy, amen, to even call out for grace at that time. But Christ became the stunt double. Christ took our place. And everything that the enemy tries to put on us, every, and every uh, strategy, every weaponry that the enemy uses against us, 
It was nailed to the cross. In order that grace may come. The law say kill him. Grace step in and say give him another chance. <laughs> give him another chance. Man say that he'll never mount to anything. She'll never mount to anything. Grace step in and say just keep watching. Yeah. And he got up, he died, he got up on that third day morning declaring that all power in heaven and earth is in his hands. And he brought forth the grace, the grace that we need, that unmerited favor that give us a future and a promise, that give us a promise and a future, that grace that we're called movement beyond our abilities. That grace that will overwrite everything that the enemy have said and done. Amen. That grace that will give us the ability now to see things a little clear. You know, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me while we was in Fort Lauderdale this weekend. He moved upon my heart. He says that when you begin to talk about grace at the end. Let them know. That grace also bring forth the power of God. Grace also bring forth the fire of God. Grace also bring forth the order of God. The government of God. You know that song we used to sing? Power, power, Lord. Power, power, Lord. Holy Ghost power, power, Lord. Holy Ghost power, power. Power, power, Lord. Power, power, Lord. I need that power, power, Lord. Need that power, power, Lord. So where there's grace, there's power. May we lift our hands again. I need you to stand to your feet if you can. If you're just as serious as I am and Dr. Sandra and our pastors, I want you to repeat this after me. And it's simple. Say, Lord Jesus. I need this grace. It's already paid for. Forgive me, Lord, that when you have given me this gift of grace, I couldn't appreciate it because I couldn't see. I was ignorant. If the truth was to be told, I was caught up in myself. But now, Lord, but now, Lord since, you since you have taken me through different phases, I see now, I see now in, spite of myself, in spite of myself, I need your grace. I need your grace. Where, there's grace Where there's grace, there's your power. There's power. Now, Lord, now, Lord fill, me fill me with your power, with your, power. With your grace. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord, Fill me, Lord, Jesus. Fill me, Lord Jesus. I need, I need your, grace, your grace, your power, your power. So, that so that I can go forth beyond the silhouette, beyond the silhouette. Into, my into my future in Christ Jesus' name. Christ Jesus name. If you believe that, let's give the Lord Jesus Christ another praise offering. Unmerited favor. I feel about two or three, maybe four heavy hearts. And we're not going to call you out or call you forth. But there's a scripture that we brought up on last, uh, last Sunday. Simple scripture. It's Zechariah 4. 
and verse 7. Maybe our team can pull that scripture up in the King James Version, please. Don't ignore what's taking place. He's moving upon some of you right now in a very light way. You have a responsibility as he's drawn to you. You draw to him too. Amen. But as Shamroko Orobo somebody. Yes. Zechariah 4 and 7. King James Version. This is what it says. It says, Who art thou? O great mountain. Somebody said that's a question. Who art thou? O anger. Who art thou? O bitterness. Who art thou? O loneliness. Who art thou? Rejection. Abandonment. Who art thou? Poverty. Who art thou? Oh, well, gay. Okay. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a what? Remember, we say the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. And he shall bring forth what? Therefore, with shouting. Crying grace, grace unto it. Now I need you to take a moment right now. Whatever that thing is that you've been dealing with in this season. You don't need to call it out unless you just want to. But I, I want to encourage you right now to speak, up, speak to it. Say, who are you, O mountain of whatever it is? And then remember now we're in the decade of the what? Mouth. We have to open up our what? Mouth. When we speak, we're declaring the word of the Lord, right? And you speak to that thing. Amen. And you shout grace, grace over it. Come on, do it now. Grace, grace. Dysfunction, you mountain of dysfunction. Grace, grace. You will be brought low in Jesus' name. Grace. The mountain of brokenheartedness. I shout grace, grace. That mountain of loneliness. I shout grace, grace. You be brought low in Christ Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And this is what I sense to do. And this is an act of our faith. And matter of fact, we have already started. You have, you have put movement to your situation. Look at somebody and say, you have already started. You, put it, you have put movement to your situation by shouting grace, grace. Amen? Amen? You know, when we had this building built by the grace of God, we, we wanted the stage area to be, to be just a little bit low, but they had to do some things. But the reason why we had wanted to be a little low so that people can come and kneel if they want to as a sign of their brokenness before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If that's you, just feel free and just kneel before the Lord. It's not in the length of, your, of how long you kneel, but it's a type of act of your obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come now. If that's you. And maybe you can't kneel. You just want to stand. It's just between you and the Lord. Just you and the Lord. 
Just you and the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you want to anoint your own self with oil, I'm going to put it right here. You can do that. I, if you just want to anoint yourself with oil. Why are you saying that? You have rights to anoint yourself. Why? Because you are of the royal priesthood. Revelation says that you are king and priest. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And we come before a time of brokenness in our life. In Jesus' name. Yes, that's it. It's personal. Between you and the Lord. You don't need nobody to lay hands on you. It's just you and the Lord. I want to shift into that song, Grace. 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 God's grace. His grace is sufficient. For me, oh, grace, grace, God's grace, His grace will give you the victory grace I need your grace God's grace his grace is sufficient for me I shall God's grace, His grace will give me the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit consume our offering before you this morning, Lord. Let grace step in and cause movement to move me out of one place into another place. Let grace come in, Lord God, and move me out of one mindset into a new, into a new space in you, Lord. Grace. Your grace, Father God, Lord, that will cause the tormentors to be pushed back into the place of hell and darkness. In Christ Jesus' name. Grace. It calls me, Lord God, to be victorious in this new year that we are approaching. Your grace. Your grace that gives me peace. Your grace that gives me rest. Your grace that gives me hope and strength. Hallelujah. Your grace. Your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. was another movement now this next movement I want us to take about a minute it may seem to be long for those of us who are winded but it's going to be a good exercise of your faith to release grace to cause movement in this next season ahead I want you to take about a minute and just worship the Lord open up your mouth worship him shout unto him Let's begin to do that now. Come on. Let the people who's watching hear you. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. I worship you. I praise you. I magnify you. The God of my salvation. The author and the finisher of my faith. The light of my life. The strength of my life. My joy, my peace, my rest, my hope, my confidence, my assurance, my attorney in the courtroom, my counselor, my doctor. I worship you and I praise you. I magnify you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. I worship you and I adore you. I enthrone you in my midst, Lord. I invoke your presence. Hallelujah. That your kingdom has come. And your will be done. In earth, in me, in my family. As it is in heaven. In earth. In my business decision. My job. My hope as it is in heaven in earth as it is in heaven and from day to day give me my daily bread your grace your grace my daily bread in my imperfections Lord I thank you for your grace unmerited favor of you Father help me to move out of complaint into shouting to victory help me to move out of the mindset of anger and acting out of character into a kingdom citizen in Christ Jesus name Let me tell you what I see by the Spirit of the Lord. That's good. That's good, sir. I see by the Spirit of the Lord that within the last 20 minutes, 
There has been some excavating taking place in the high places of our mind and even our heart. Some things has been cleared out. Do you agree to that now? Do you agree to that? I see this next phase, this next season ahead by us exercising and continue to exercise because we're kingdom citizens. The grace is a gift to us. It has already gone forth and start clearing out the way so that we can set up what the Lord has placed in our heart there. And in that place is where we're going to experience the favor of God. Hallelujah. The supernatural power of God. Grace. I don't know who we are, but I feel that some of us need to say, Lord, I love you, because we hadn't said it in a while. Lord, I love you. I appreciate you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Love you, Father. I don't know who you are, but as you stretch your, uh, lift your arms, lift your hands, the power of God is going to move on you because you need it. It's going to move on you. When I say move upon you, it's not going to cause you to act unseemly, but you're going to sense the presence of the Lord. Yes, sir. Praise you. And I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Now, as you sense his presence, this is what I do all the time. I practice this. As I sense his presence, then I pull it into a situation that I have been dealing with. I just gave you a key. Because I can't do nothing with it. I always make a mess out of it. Or just call the mind, just keep running, 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 running to no end. But when I sense his presence, I'm able to welcome the presence of God in that situation. Yeah, do that now. Do that now. Yes. I know we're exercising, but may we lift our hands again before him. Yes. 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 Now, this is what I need you to do. In the presence of the Lord, when you are in his presence, you never come empty-handed. Some of us need to do it. And you all know that we're not a money preaching pastor. We don't do that. But some of us need to bring a gift before the Lord. Let the Lord use you. Bring the barrel up for those who want to participate or maybe you want to use your phone or whatever the case may be. But bring that gift before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you pray over it before you release it. In Jesus' name. And watch and see what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt thee. 
Before we go, I want to pray for that person who's been experiencing pain on the right side. Seem like from your neck coming down to your shoulders, you here meet me up to the front so that we can pray. The Lord is going to break that off of you in Christ Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Grace! 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 In Christ Jesus' name, hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ another praise offering. Those of you that are watching through by the way of our media platform, we want to thank you for tuning in to our services. You could have tuned in anywhere, but you chose to tune into the services here. We pray and trust that something was shared with you to encourage you along this journey that the Lord placed you on. Know of a surety, the grace of God is there. Know of a surety, there's nothing too big for God's grace. Even when it seems like that you're at wit's end and darkness is all around you, grace will come running. This grace is a gift that Jesus paid for on Calvary's cross. And this gift has been given to you and now it's in your possession. Allow the grace of God to work on your behalf. Allow the grace of God to encourage you in the season that you're in. Maybe you're in phase one. You're in phase two or phase three of your journey. Maybe phase four. But know of a surety that this path that you're on, each phase is going to build and it's going to establish. It's going to grow you. That when you get to stage five of your life, you're in a place of rulership. You're in a place of authority. You're in a place where God is going to cause movement and favor like never before that you're able to do things that you have only dreamt about, now it's getting ready to come to pass because of God's unmerited favor. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you for joining our services, and we're going to stand to be dismissed. Hallelujah. This baby right here, that, that's your daughter, look almost like your twin. Glory be to God. Will you stand to your feet? What is your first name? Tokora, that's a beautiful name. Tokora, uh, this is what I see by the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, you, 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 it's, it, it's, like, it's like you've been, you've been spread it here, been spread it there, one thing to the other. And uh, uh, 
seem like a direction here and a direction there. Uh, but I see a person such as yourself like to stay into a safe place within yourself. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord says that that safe place within yourself, now he's going to cause grace to cause you to go beyond because there has been a little bit of fear here, been a little bit of fear there. I know where we all have to deal with fear. But the Lord is going to cause grace now uh, to encourage you, and grace is going to take you in a place uh, that you have only imagined. Uh, I see grace is going to blot out all the lies that the enemy has spoken, that grace is going to come in now and going to clean up the canvas. Everything that the enemy has tried to alter, grace is going to come in and show you for who you really are in the Lord. The Lord said that you are precious in his sight. I hear the spirit of the Lord. He said that his love towards you will never change. The way that he think about you will never change. And nothing that you can do can change his love or his thoughts. So this next season that you're getting ready to step into, it's going to be a sure, st- a, a, a sure season. I see strength coming to your legs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see life. I see the blood flow coming into your legs. And it's going to cause movement. Because the Lord said that your future is bright. And this is the word of the Lord unto you. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Hallelujah. Yeah. Grace. Grace. God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, 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 hallelujah, oh, 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 Lord, hallelujah, somebody shout grace, grace, yeah, hallelujah, God's grace is sufficient. Grace! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus! Hallelujah! Yes, yes, yes! Grace! Yeah, unmerited favor. When it feels like as though that we are undeserving of it, here come grace. Somebody shout, Grace is on an assignment. Just for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come, 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 baby. Come, come, come. Yeah, quick, quick, quick. Yeah, quick, quick. Quick, quick. Lift your hands before the Lord. Lift your hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, church. Shout, Grace. Oh. Grace! Grace. Break shackles. Grace! Grace. Break the feathers and chains. Grace! Grace. Break generational curses. Grace! Grace. To bring you into a new you in the name of Jesus. Now come on and shout grace, baby. Shout it. Come on, come on. Break the silence. Shout grace. Grace. Shout it. Shout it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give her a hug. Put one of those mama hugs on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace. Yeah, we act a fool sometimes, but here come grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, grace, grace. grace. That's it, that's it. Come on, come on, come on. Grace, grace, grace. Grace break burials. Hallelujah. 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 Let the fire of never goes out. Let the fire of my altar never goes out. 
Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Now, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. Thank you for your grace that went forth, Father, and was nailed to the cross for our salvation. Thank you, Father, for the blood sacrifice that was pleasing in your sight. And we thank you, Father, for the power of the resurrection that completed the work of Calvary. That now we are joint heirs. That as many that will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we thank you, Father, that you have given us the gift of grace. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, do rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth and forevermore. And everybody says, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.